Hey, I want to welcome you to my herb garden. I've been asked by Heidi at Rain Country Homestead to be a part of her herb collaboration. So, let me start this out by saying I am not a doctor. I don't play one on YouTube. I don't diagnose. I don't prescribe. I don't do any of those things. I'm not telling you what to do with herbs. I'm simply going to show you a few of the herbs that I grow, why we grow them, and and what I plan on planting this year to add to my herb garden. I started studying herbs back in 19, I think 1984. I love plants and I really got into it. I started um, with an herbology course through Herbal Healer and that um, I really like Dr. Mariah McCain. It's herbalhealer.com or through the mail, I guess you would say a mail order correspondence course a lot of great knowledge there. Uh, I went on to become a natural health consultant around 1990-91 maybe and even started selling quality herbs through a company. But coming here to Deep South, Danny allowed me to turn this into an herb garden. This was a daylily bed. I dug all the daylilies up. He constructed the white picket fence around it and last fall uh, in 2015, I turned this into a herb garden. Um, all last year I had all amounts of herbs, but now we need to do some maintenance. Right here, I don't even know if you can see it, but the oregano has got a lot of, I guess you could say, dead limbs. It's got to be trimmed back, and uh, I'll have oregano. Here, this was sage. I'm going to cut it back. I'm not sure if the sage I planted will come back or not, but we will see. Over here, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but this is stevia. I have stevia coming up. We didn't have a harsh winter. If we'd have had a harsh winter, it would have killed my stevia. But guys, I have a backup. I have three pots of stevia in my greenhouse that is growing profusely. So if this had died, I had a backup. You can always take stevia in the house, pot some of it, take it in the house. But for a sweetener, this is great. Right now, we have honey, we have sugar, we have lots of things. But I dry stevia and powder it for extra sweeteners when we need it and for people who cannot use sugar. Right here is my thyme. Time is doing really great here. I had it in another location. Time wasn't growing very well. But it's doing great here. I have, as you can see, rosemary. Um, on the other side, I have sage, different types of thyme. But today, we're going to do a little maintenance. I'm going to be cleaning up my herb bed and I'm going to plant. I'm going to show you a couple of things I'm going to plant which is lavender. I'm going to use the Homestead Iron, this trowel. This thing is awesome, guys. Danny did a um, review on the Homestead box the other day. I went and snuck this out of the greenhouse just to use. It's really sharp. We're going to try to see what it does when I dig for my lavender. Okay, one thing I found that grows really well here is the fern leaf lavender. I'd never seen one before till last year. I've tried the other lavenders and I'm going to try it again this year. But the fern leaf, I still have some growing now. And we're going to see if it gotten cold again, I'm pretty sure it would have disappeared, but um, we're going to see if this won't work real well for us this year. So I'm going to plant that here. And like I said, I keep trying the regular lavender. I bought one of these too, and oh, it's smelling really good here. Heidi from Rain Country sent me some lavender yarrow soap. That stuff's awesome, guys. You can dry this lavender, you can make soaps. I have yarrow growing in the backyard. So, I have a wide variety of things here. We're going to plant this one in the other side of the bed. And this thing's working great cuts right through roots. This pot is made to go in the ground, but 
I like to take it off because as you can see it's kind of root bound if you in those pots so I take that pot off and just leave it as compost in the bed here and break this up just a little so my roots aren't root bound and they can start growing and I don't want to cover it higher than it was in the pot I want to leave that little bit sticking out and water it in a little while I have these clippers they were sent to me last summer you can clip all this dead out these things are great for these little bitty tender herbs you guys will love a pair of these for snipping in your herb garden in my herb garden I grew many things that I used to cook with such as basil great with tomatoes aloe vera is my number one pick as far as lots of uh, skin diseases and using it for burns here we have lavender makes great teas then the thyme it just grew everywhere this year it looked really great it's great to add into a lot of different uh, dishes as you can see i also have sage we use sage with um, our sausage i tried my hand this year with turmeric something else we're going to be growing again the lemongrass makes a beautiful border we used it to divide the road from the garden and it just is a pretty thing to have growing plus we use it in asian dishes it can also be made into teas and added to teas here we have plenty of ginger gingers uh, used with stomach issues we hope to add more ginger to the garden here we have the pomegranate tree with garlic chives below it garlic chives uh, ward off the bugs around many of our fruit trees and the pomegranate has many many medicinal purposes um, great for the seeds plus the juices that's in them mint we have several types of mint this mint is growing under our peach trees yarrow it's under our mimosa I'm talking yarrow for burns for flus and for fever probably number two pick for me medicinally Violets grow wild here all over the place. Then we have passion fruit or passion flower, maypop, whatever you want to call it. It's great uh, to calm the nerves, make teas out of the leaves, the flowers, whatever. It grows wild here. Clovers, red clovers. We have those planted and we use it for animal feed. Keep many herbs in our greenhouse, such as our moringa trees. Then we have the comfrey that we will plant outside shortly. We have cilantro that will go outside for our Mexican dishes. Another aloe plant that will go back in my herb garden. We have stevia and purple basil. No homestead would be complete without a good herb library. These are a few of my top picks here that I have. These six are the best books I found to get you through Herbology 101, maybe. The How to Herb book is a great start to figuring out what you need for her to use the herbs for. The New Age Herbalist has color photos, and the prescription for natural healing just is a good overall how to eat, plus what herbs to do, what to stay away from. You can't go wrong with these books. Thank you from Deep South Homestead.